So if you want to understand hair loss, you first have to understand the hair follicle itself, right? So the hair follicle is actually a mini organ. And as such, it needs oxygen and it needs nutrients and it needs minerals to survive. They're, cr they're critical to its healthy survival, right? Healthy operation. So blood flow arrives to the hair follicle bulb, also known as the dermal papilla, via a network of blood vessels. So you can see that basically what's going on here. And um, really importantly is that the hair follicle is not just sitting in the scalp, right? There are these three distinct layers to the scalp. And the outermost layer is called the epidermis. That's basically, you know, the surface of the scalp. And then underneath that, you have the dermis, possibly the most important of the layers. And then below that, you have the hypodermis and the blood vessels and this kind of like fatty tissues come in through here. So in the dermis, you'll notice that you have the hair follicle bulb sits in the dermis, right? And you have these quite complex structures and features of the hair follicle taking place inside the dermis. So you have the erector pili muscles, you have the sebaceous glands, and the most important part, probably the hair follicle bulb itself. So keep this in mind as we're moving forward, because these three distinct layers, when you get hair loss, um, you find that these layers get compromised. And I'll, I'll go into that more in more detail later on. So also keep in mind that hair follicle miniaturization is a hallmark of androgenetic alopecia. And what that means is that we identify male pattern baldness, right? Androgenetic alopecia by looking for this process of hair follicle miniaturization. So if you zoom in on the scalp, if you have a microscopic, um, if you have a microscope and you look at the hair fo follicles under a microscope, what you'll see is this uneven distribution of hair follicles getting thinner and thinner. And you can contrast that to a hair loss shedding disorder, something like telogen effluvium, where the hair follicles don't miniaturize, they just fall out, right? So you get this process where each successive hair growth cycle, the hairs become thinner and wispier. And this is really important to keep in mind as we go forward and you'll see, you'll kind of see how it all links together and makes sense. So keep this idea of hair follicle miniaturization um, in mind. So moving on, balding scalps have lower blood flow, right? We know from multiple, multiple studies that balding scalps are deficient in blood flow compared to scalps with healthy hair. And we've actually got a solid number to look at, and that's uh, 2.6 times lower blood flow um, than scalps without hair loss. So SBF stands for subcutaneous blood flow. So subcutaneous blood flow was 2.6 times lower than the values found in normal individuals. And I understand that some people will say, well, the hairs fell out and then the blood vessels weren't needed. So that's what causes the reduced blood flow in balding scalps. And the counter argument to this is that, you know, you can look at a condition, for example, like peripheral artery disease, where people essentially, um, they get reduced blood flow in their legs. And as a consequence of that, the hair in their legs starts falling out. So you can clearly see uh, which way around the relationship is, right? The blood flow reduces, and then that causes the hair loss uh, to start. So that is the way it works. So this is just a part of a mini mini series if you want to see the full video i'll link to that video somewhere in here the ending screen or down in the description below so you can either watch these small videos that i've broken down or you can watch the full presentation so i'll go and see you over in those other videos